Well, you guys, the plot thickens with another round of pardons. Now, this just released today. And look at who is on the list of possibilities of pardons. Unbelievable. Now, they give her very long odds in terms of receiving a pardon. But this is really creepy. Because here's the list of possible pardons. And they show the odds like we're betting or something, right? And they show the odds of this happening. And there she is right there. 5,000 to 1 odds. Now, we had started talking about this about two to three months ago. And back then there was one news story on the entire internet talking about the possibility of this happening. So this is crazy. Now, there are a lot of other people that they're saying will probably be in this pardon list, which don't make any sense at all. Just to understand that these people are puppets. They are used as pawns on the chessboard to manipulate the public. And a lot of these people are on the government payroll. They're being paid and controlled by the government. Much of Hollywood is run and paid for uh, by the government. And the, the entire thing is basically to simplify it is to be like Pied Pipers. And to control the masses through entertainment media. Look at this. They even have a whole section on her about this. Of all the names and the potential pardon list, GM is the most intriguing. The former girlfriend of you-know-who awaiting trial accused of that. So, Mr. T is an acquaintance with both E and M. Remember he wished M shortly after she was arrested wished her well if she's got any damning evidence against t setting her free makes it all go away this is exactly what we said and now the professional analysts are saying that this is a possibility i had a lot of people unsubscribe from the channel saying that's impossible that'll never happen don't even talk like that and yet here it is so that's on the table now in other news Look at this. Remember the Queen's Theater at the World's Fair in Queens, Flushing Meadows? And we talked about all this. And then we found out that this building looks a lot like the building in I Pet Goat 3. Remember that? So here's the building. And it had the circular building with this thing coming out of the side, like a rectangle coming out of the side. Well, one of you uh, found that this will now become the site of the mass CVVC site. Let's read this article very quickly. I'm going to make sure we're connected. And we'll keep going with this show here. All right, appears as though we are. Okay, this is crazy, you guys. And thanks to the new channel members, Michael and Susan. Appreciate you guys uh, signing up. Support the channel monthly. Let's get back into this. So, what is this all about? Well, it's... <laughs> look at this. They don't even try to hide it anymore. They don't even try to hide it anymore. Okay? Now remember, this is where Mr. T was born. And lived. His father and his father's father. And the site of the World's Fair, 1939 and 64. We broke that down thoroughly in previous shows. But look at this. 24-hour CVVC site is slated to open to soon open at the Queen's Theater in Flushing Meadows. Mayor Bill de Blasio said Thursday, the mass VC site will have the capacity to inoculate thousands of eligible New Yorkers a day. Wow. Those slots will be available by appointment only, according to Blasio. Officials did not say when the Queen's Theater will open for VCs. On slides shown to reporters Thursday, the location was labeled coming soon. So, this is weird, it's cryptic, and this is what they're up to. Now, 
let's get into the topic of the show today. And I'm here with you guys this morning to ask some questions. Now, these are fair questions about the ownership of land by billionaires. That's what we're going to talk about today. And the question is, is there evidence that the rich have the ability and motive to rig the economy in their favor? Another question is, do they influence politicians to rig the economy in their favor? I think the answer to both of those questions is absolutely yes. Lobbyists, we've seen it time and time again. And the richer they get often means the more control and power that they have over the rest of us. And they simply manipulate politicians with their money. We all know that this already happens. Well, we're going to talk about how that applies to farmland and ownership of land by billionaires and what effect it will have on the rest of us who can't afford to manipulate governments in our favor. Here's what happens. U.S. farmland is rapidly decreasing. And at this rate, what we're going to talk about in this article right here, there will be very little leftover farmland. Quality land with good soil to grow plants. It's all being bought up by the billionaires. This is basically an assault on the regular people of this world. The people that help build this country. The rest of us. Farmland in the U.S. decreased 31 million acres, a territory equivalent to the state of New York, over a 21-year period. Their new report assessed the loss of farmland and ranch land from 92 to 2012. Farms under threat, the state of America's farmland, is the most comprehensive assessment to date. So basically they ran this study and they found out that farmland has decreased by 11 million acres in one generation now part of this is urban sprawl but also it's being bought up by billionaires now when I, what i'm going to show you next is hard stopping i was shocked because i've been talking to you guys about trying to find a little bit of land with some water with some flat areas to grow food. In other words, farmland. We've been talking about this. And as I'm talking about this over the last five years, it appears as though billionaires are doing the exact same thing. Taking away your opportunity to be self-sufficient. And their purchases are becoming so numerous now that it's start, starting to drive up the price of farmland and real estate in general here's an article here this is all the way back in 2014 they were talking about Monsanto the enemy of family farmers after uh, years of work by scientific public interest organizations Consumers around the world are becoming aware of the dangers of industrial chemical-based agriculture. The most legitimate science research bodies recommend turning toward organic and sustainable agriculture, shunning genetically engineered products. Now, this is weird because the UN was involved in this study as well. But now, here we are, and they're defending Monsanto and all this stuff. They flipped the script. I had to clear my throat there for a second. It says, despite the UN's assessment that sustainable agriculture is the way to feed the world's growing population, U.S. government agencies continue to support the biotechnology industry and its pesticide promoting crops as the path forward. Now, Mr. T was behind this as well. He was supporting Monsanto. His words were, we have Monsanto's back. 
So this is what's going on with that. So you got to ask yourself, with these billionaires buying up all this land, and here's one in particular, and we're going to get into what he's been up to lately. Made one of his largest purchases in a place where I have land, just a little bit. Saved up over the years and was able to get a few acres, which is a lot less expensive than you can ever imagine, with no mortgage. And this is what he's up to in Arkansas. Now let's look into this article a little bit. But before we do, understand that during the spamdemic, there have been more billionaires created making more money than almost any time in history. How can that be when our economy was basically decimated? Small businesses were all run into the ground and given unfair rules that did not apply to large corporations. How can that happen? Well, it's a takeover. Plain and simple. And people know it. Small businesses know it. They're like, that's not fair. Why can't I stay open, but Walmart can? They'll tell you that to your face. But then when you tell them it's a takeover, they scratch your head and go, why would our government do that? Exactly. Bingo. You're starting to wake up. It's because they favor large, controllable corporations. How do they control corporations? Through, through greed. So these corporations are driven by greed, by growth. Okay, and they are they have pacts with the government. They get bailouts from the government. They're too big to fail. That's why there's a takeover of small businesses, because you are not controlled by all of this. You're controlled by the market. And if people are buying your product and the rules and regulations hoisted upon you. You see how this works? So. More billionaires making more money than pretty much any time in history. And what are they doing with their money? They're buying up all this prime land. Land with water, land for farming. And that means that middle class people and lower class people are going to have to pay more for this land. And that means that farmers who want to maintain their independence are slowly losing their power to stand alone. And that happens with every single large land purchased by a billionaire. Now, the question is, why did these billionaires need all that land? And some people could argue, oh, well, people buy land to store their money, to invest their money. Especially with the, with the trend of less and less of this land being available, that's going to drive up the price. So this would be a wise investment. But, I think there's something more sinister at play. And I believe that really what's happening is they're creating a monopoly on farmland that will then be doled out only to people who use Monsanto seed and use Roundup. And the independent farmers who do not want to comply will not be given rights to farm on this land or be sold this land. Now, old Gilly Bates has more farmland in America. He is the new farmer king. Bates Ranch instead of Bates Motel. And this is what's happening. He says he's no longer the world's richest man, but he can claim a new title, America's Farmland King. Become the largest landowner of farmland in the U.S. by quietly buying up massive plots across the country. 242,000 acres of farmland and nearly 27,000 acres of other land across 19 states. The biggest chunks he holds are in Louisiana and Arkansas, where he owns 69,000 in Louisiana and 47,000 in Arkansas. Now, I wanted to get an idea of how much land this was. And basically, I did the conversion. Let's just pull that up here. Because you guys really need to understand what's going on here. This is 47,000 acres converted to square miles. That's 73,000 square miles. I'm sorry, 73 square miles, not 73,000. 
73 square miles. Now, if you look at a city like Little Rock, it's 116 square miles. So, Gilly Bates bought up half of Little Rock. Think of it that way. Half of an entire city in farmland. Now, we all know that they don't build cities on farmland because farmland is rare. So, really, if you want to really look at apples to apples, you could say that this is worth multiple cities. Now, what size is 73 square miles? Well, here is the San Francisco Bay. A lot of people know about San Francisco Bay, how massive it is. The ships come in through here. There's this huge bay. You got Berkeley. You got several cities here. Daly City, Richmond, Palo Alto, San Jose, San Mateo, Vallejo. You've got Pleasanton. You got all these cities around the Bay Area. Well, this is equivalent to 80 square miles. This was actually a real land purchase in the Bay Area. Up in the, I think this is kind of like the foothills. But there you go. That's what 80 square miles looks like compared to the Bay Area. That's a lot of land. So, it doesn't look like much, but it's half the size of Little Rock, Arkansas. And remember, this is just one billionaire. Imagine the hundreds of billionaires driving up the prime American farmland, leaving little left for you and me. So I believe there's something more sinister at play. I believe that this all is going to link in with Monsanto at a future date. It's going to edge out the independent farmer, creating some kind of farm monopoly. And since Mr. T was behind Monsanto, he's not going to have a problem with this, even though he's going out of office. Now, Bitten has talked about doing something about this, but he won't. He'll have Monsanto's back too. Mark my words. Now, what's the problem with this? Casey, what's, what's wrong with more efficient farming? The problem is, is these seeds compete with organic seeds. The problem is, is that Monsanto has been proven that Roundup has caused harm to people. Even though Mr. T's uh, department found that there was no connection between harm done to people and Roundup. Do you see what's happening here? So, look at the trillions that the government has given billionaires to make the VCs that nobody wants. How they shut down middle class businesses so that billionaires can scoop it all up. Look how they force quarantined us so more billionaires can get even richer with their online purchases. That's what I'm talking about here. This is why you can't trust what's happening. The middle class America is literally under attack. And every year that goes by, our wages stay the same, but our rents and food prices go up. We're asked to work more hours with less pay or the same amount of pay and then all these little taxes and fines and all the little things you got to pay for and increasing draconian control creep their way in every single year that goes by so that's why i have a problem with this i don't have a problem with people who are wealthy i have a problem with using that wealth to one control governments two make life way worse for you and i we're just trying to get by and yet, this is what we have to deal with. So, that's what I wanted to say. Um, there, there has to be some kind of monopoly laws against this kind of behavior. It's predatory behavior by people with lots and lots of money. So, I really wish that this could be stopped. This is not fair what's happening, you guys. It's not fair. Let's let this ca chat catch up. And... We will be back on here probably tomorrow or the day after. I put up a trailer from the fifth wave. We'll break that down in a full show. I'm also working on Tomorrowland. I already got my screen captures. I'm going to edit that today. Tomorrowland 
with George Clooney. And it's about traveling to another dimension. And in there, they mention 58 over and over and over again. So we're going to cover that as well. And it actually takes place at the 1939 World's Fair. Which links directly into Mr. T himself in Queens. Everything has come full circle. It is all being revealed. Let's go into the chat. All right. They just go around the laws or make new ones in their favor. That's exactly it. That's exactly it, Illuminati Destroyer Bear. And this is what I was trying to articulate this morning. That this is what they do. And it's been proven that they do it. They're doing it in plain sight. Look at what just happened. We just got a VC mandated, basically, or created anyway, using our tax dollars. And that was all pushed by Gilly himself, Gilly Bates. And they let it happen. This is a guy who doesn't even have, he's not even a physician. He's not even a real physician. And they allowed that to happen because of his money which does not have our best interests at heart. All right. Hound asks if I think Trump is the AC. I don't think so. I think he's a precursor to it. All right. Yeah, people mention the middle class, but not the poor. Well, the, the two go hand in hand. You know, the middle class think that they have it whipped. They think they have it beat, but they really don't. Most middle class people are living paycheck to paycheck. They just have a little bit higher lifestyle, but they're still at the mercy of the markets. They're not too big to fail. And we see middle class going under all the time. I was middle class back in two, the 2000s. And... I was one divorce away from losing it all. And that's exactly what happened. I owned a home in California. And you just lose it. This is just what happens. Okay. So uh, the middle class are in the same boat as the poor. It's just that they have more stuff. If that makes any sense. Middle class are small businesses. And they don't have it whipped either. They're at the mercy of the markets. They're at the mercy of whatever local ordinances, rules, laws. You guys, it only takes one law or rule for them to pass to put a lot of people out of business. It only takes one surge of technology to put lots of people out of business. We saw this with the retail brick and mortar trend going away and people moving to online purchases. Well, who... Who was the ones who were the ones behind online purchases and really pushing that technology forward? Well, those are the billionaires. That's Bezos, Amazon. They're the ones that push that technology forward and have the ability to create websites and all that stuff. You guys, that's expensive stuff. If you're a small business and you want to create a website that gets seen, I'm going to give you an example, a real life example. Back in like 2000 12, 13, maybe 14, I had this little invention. I had this idea, okay? And I called it the uh, full deck wallet insert. And it, it actually ended up becoming its own um, its own wallet. First, I was going to sell it as an insert to wallet companies like Fossil and stuff like that. And like make a bunch of them and sell them to them to sell with their wallets and of course, when you go and on a sales call to one of these large corporations, they never call you back. In fact, they'll just steal your idea. So I made my own website and I tried to market this wallet insert. And some of you might even have one of these because back when our channel started, I was I had a link where you could get one of these. And it was really cheap. I think it was six or eight bucks. And it was called the full deck wallet insert. Now, what made this wallet insert unique was that it fanned out like a deck of cards. And you could stick your credit cards in there and just open it up and it had a hinge on it. And you could open it like you're holding a hand in it when you're playing a card game. 
So I was so excited about this because no one had come up with this idea yet. And I'm like, that's exactly what people need when they're looking at their credit cards. They need to be able to see all of them at once through clear, clear plastic. I just have to find a way to hinge those and make it rugged so it lasts a while. So I made, I was making these by hand and mailing them out to people. Now, I never got rich on that and never even made a significant amount of money. I think I broke even. I did it for a couple years. But one thing I realized very quickly, you have to have money to make money. And the problem I was having is my wallet insert was not being marketed. It's all about marketing and getting your name out in front of people and getting your product out in front of people. And if you can't do that efficiently by spending fives and tens of thousands of dollars in marketing, then it will never be seen. Because most people use Google searches or most people don't know your product is even around. So you have to show them the concept. And that's why you'll see a lot of people that are successful in business. It's because they appear on TV shows and stuff like that to get their product started. You know, Oprah was famous for this. She'd bring people onto her show and immediately people would run out and go buy this person's product if they appeared on the Oprah Winfrey show. And of course, I would never appear on a show like that because she's a sellout. But the thing is, is that is what's going on. So at the end of the day, I was like, there's no way I'm going to spend, give Google $5,000 to make my wallet insert show up in a bunch of searches. But that's what they wanted. Do you see how the game is rigged and how just by simply having a product, it, that doesn't mean you're going to be successful. You have to know people. You have to spend a lot of money to get your product started. I'm talking tens of thousands of dollars, which most people just don't have the money to do. So that's an example of how the system is rigged. Now, I don't know if they have this wallet insert out there, but I'm sure someone's stolen, stolen the idea already. Okay, because that's how America works. They'll just steal your idea and then they'll make you fight them in court, which you won't have the money to do because it's going to cost tens of thousands of dollars to hire an attorney. So um, that's where everything sits with that. And, you know, it's it's disheartening, but it's this is when you realize the game is rigged. So what is our answer to this? The answer is to keep exposing their lies, keep exposing their manipulation, show how it's unfair. So that's where we're at with that. All right. So what else do we have here? Um, yeah, it's a big club, says George Carlin. Absolutely. All right, I'm just in the chat over here with you guys. Oh, cool. Natasha's from Central Arkansas. That's awesome. Beautiful country up there. The soil's a little, has a little bit too much iron in it, um, which I realized after uh looking at it it's very red and rich it's got a lot of like crystals in it which is kind of cool i have a, uh, a rock that i got from uh my land over there pulled it out it's not a crystal crystal but it's a really cool like formation so if you're gonna be in arkansas and buy land you should probably have raised beds or you know something like that i don't even know if you'll be able to amend the soil Certain things grow really well in it, in the Ozarks, but a lot of stuff doesn't. I heard uh, a Plain Truth upload one of our videos, and that's great. I had no idea he had gotten over his beef with me, so I guess he has. And that's cool. I'm always looking to mend fences, so that's great. So I'm glad he's over it, and I'm glad he mirrored my video. So that's that's awesome. Oh, cool. Someone used to live in Yellville. Not far from where I'm at. I don't want to give the exact location, but what's, what's going on with this drama up here? Jeez. Come on, guys. Got the drama. We're, we're here doing a show. Oh, 
All right. Yeah, a lot of people, you can actually go on to YouTube and there's actually crystal digging uh, videos. There's one guy, he's hilarious. He's got, oh, here, I got to show you guys. This is funny. This is funny. Let's go on here. Oh, that's us live. Um, <laughs> and it's like they just pull this stuff right out of the ground. I was shocked. Now, this is what the this guy right here, Crystals of Arkansas. I don't know my sound hooked up, but this guy's great. He like he's got like dreadlocks, and let's find his videos here. And he just goes into this dirt. This is what the dirt looks like. It's bright red. Play a couple seconds of this, and this is what they pull out of the ground. Right out of the, right out of the mud. It's like a clay. You could almost like make clay with this. I mean, um, pottery with this clay. It's that pure. A lot of it. So this is what it looks like in the Ozarks. So this guy has a whole channel on digging crystals. I would consider this kind of an ASMR kind of video. Some people are into. Um, they're into digging crystals. And it's kind of therapeutic, you know, because you're like in there in the dirt and it's like finding, it's like a, I guess you'd call it a fetish. Some people consider it like a, a fetish of digging around in dirt and finding things. And so some people really like this kind of stuff. I don't know about all this. This looks like metaphysical stuff. I'm not into that or using crystals for anything like that. But they are beautiful formations that, that God put into the earth. So that's kind of cool. Use them for decoration or whatever. But don't get into this metaphysical stuff and trying to use this for healing. Jesus Christ is the only source of healing. And as far as I know, he didn't use crystals to do that. So pray to him for healing. So there's always going to be one going, Casey's pushing crystals. No, that's not what I'm doing. I'm just talking about God's cool formations. Heck, you could stick like a light inside, you know what I mean? Like make a uh, a light inside of your house with one of these. Like stick a bulb inside the middle of it and hang it from the ceiling. That would be cool. Huh? That would make some crazy um, projections onto the wall. I wonder if anyone's ever tried that. Yeah, I guess you'd have to find one with a natural void in the middle so you could fit a bulb in there. And then somehow attach it. You'd probably have to like glue it or... I don't know, anchor it somehow. But crystals are very hard, from what I know. So I wanted to share that with you guys. Get dirty, get crystals. <laughs> yeah. Johnny Mnemonic Decode. Oh, wow, that might be a good one. Let me see if I can... Johnny... Let's pull it up in the... Uh... Okay, we got it here. So maybe I'll look at that. Gosh, that's an old one. 1995. Wow. Look at this. May 26th. All right, we might take a look at that. Yeah, because somebody had asked me to look at um, Tomorrowland. So had I had you not asked me to do that, I probably not would have not looked at it. So I looked at that already, and that's that looks good. So maybe we'll look at Johnny Mnemonic. Apparently, there's a crystal, uh, not crystal, but diamond mines in Arkansas. There's a place. Here, let me pull this up. This is crazy, you guys. Okay, so crystal. This is crazy. There's, there's a place where you could go in Arkansas and this. Oh, wait. Oops, sorry. And this boy uh, found this huge diamond. to go here it is look at this yeah you, you basically just go and you like there's a place it's where you can mine for diamonds it's public and this kid found a this boy found a 5.16 carat diamond in this place called arkansas crater of diamonds there's a lot of crazy stuff going on in arkansas but look at this pretty cool huh 
now that the diamond has to be cut which will make it smaller but that's a massive diamond he didn't even know he had it he took it up to the counter and the guy's like that's a massive diamond it's cool that the guy didn't like just steal it from him or go hey i'll throw that away for you right the people in arkansas are very very honest never seen that in my life and i've lived a lot of places you know france was actually there was a really honest people in france but some people were angry but most people in france were just the greatest neighbors ever and so that was a neat experience uh i remember my neighbor there inviting me over he didn't speak any english at all but he said well he knew my name he called me kissy kissy that's what he would call me and uh he knocked on the door and he just waved his hand and i went over to the backyard and he was roasting chestnuts on the fire overlooking the beautiful valley views over there i'm, I'm gonna put together a france video of all the videos that we did in france where we were with the hens and in the farm and doing projects with mark i'm gonna put all those together and there's some fishing videos in there so you guys can see what it's like over there i think it's kind of cool here's the guy the honest guy who didn't steal this kid's diamond this boy's diamond i don't like to say kid because that means goat but uh, you know we have habits so i have to try to change that so hopefully this will pay for his college and um not that he should go to college. There's other things you can do with your money. Build a homestead, buddy. That's what I would do with that money. Buy yourself five acres. Pay it off. Uh, put a home on it. That's what you need to do with that diamond money. You can worry about and get, get yourself some kind of certification. Learn heating and air conditioning or something. and So you'll always have work. But you'll have a very low debt base. But yeah, anyone can cruise up here and uh, find this stuff. Said it was just laying in the dirt. Pretty crazy. So I wanted to show you guys that. You guys have great questions. Okay. Yeah, I saw a lot of links between Disneyland and Tomorrowland in, in the film Tomorrowland. Um, the, uh, what was it called? What's that ride? There's a ride in Disneyland, Los Angeles. That appeared in the film at the end credits. So, um, and then It's a Small World, the ride was also in the film. And that's where he goes through the portal to another dimension while he's on that ride. So, so people have been asking more and more, you know, what is this land thing? Well, you can get an acre for $3,000 in Arkansas, still to this day. I don't anticipate that that will last very long, but uh, you'll have timber. Um, if you're lucky, you'll have a water source. Uh, my little property has a little stream at the bottom. It's way at the bottom, but it does run most of the year. So, you know, uh, you can't beat that. Now, I know it's a lot hard for a lot of you to come up with $3,000, but I think most of us give that away in rent in two or three months so you know this is possible for anybody and having something like that with a low tax base literally you're talking dollars a year five ten twenty fifty dollars a year for taxes it's almost nothing in arkansas so um many of you have already started with this you've already started to do this now you gotta do your research Got to make sure there's you're not in Tornado Alley because there are parts of Arkansas that get a lot of tornadoes. You want to be up off the up off of the the floodplain and up off the floor there. You'll have less tornadoes up in the mountains, foothills. So you got to do your research. But I share this with you not for fear. I share this with you so that you can not be a slave to debt and a slave to rent or a slave to mortgage. God doesn't want us in 30-year loans. He wants us, the Bible says seven years is the maximum amount of time you're supposed to have to pay back a debt. So why not have something that you can just have paid off? And then you can slowly build it up on your own time. It will give you a sense of security. 
so that you don't feel manipulated and threatened by an employer, for instance, or a local ordinance or mandatory um, VCs or something. You'll always have a place to go where they can't take away things from you. So. Yeah, they're trying to frame Jenny. That's a great uh, question there. Jenny says. Uh, the last attempt at secession caused the WAR between North and South, and he blamed it on S-L-A-V-E-R-Y, but it it was over exactly. Jenny nailed it. Now, they're trying to drag all of that stuff back into the debate right now with the flag, right, that was at the crappit hole in the guy with the horns, remember all that? So they're trying to drag all that back out. And I told you guys, this was a honey trap for the Patriots. That's what it was. They were drawing them out. It was a bird call. So don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. Now, uh, you also want to, if you're thinking about getting some land, you also want to make sure that uh, it is free of restrictions. They call it unrestricted land. So if you want to, you can dig a hole and go to the bathroom without you know, some sheriff riding, riding up saying you can't do that. You want unrestricted land. So, awesome. Some of you have no mortgage. That's amazing. Way to go. You, you'll be free. They can't threaten you and say, you know, or look, the biggest thing I've ever gone through in my life was continuing to get laid off, you know, and you're, when you're trying to pay a mortgage, it's very difficult to do when you you don't know what your income is going to be like. And, you know, my mother worked for the state of California for her career and she's now retired, but um, that was the most uh, you know, secure job that you could have would be like working for the government, right? But here, that's the problem. You're working for the government. Now, my sister also works for the state of California, my older sister, and she just had a 10% cut in her pay. They call it a furlough cut because of uh, CV-19. So nothing is for sure anymore, okay? Now, in the private sector, you're taking your chances because you don't know what your employer is going to do. I was laid off like three or four times. And you got to scramble, find a job in the same area. You know, it's very difficult to do. And that causes a lot of stress, stress on the family. And really what you need to do is find a way to be debt and mortgage free. And it's possible to do. You might have to move to do it. But look, the, the slam dunk case scenario where you could actually do this would be if you were on some kind of a fixed income like social security disability you could you should do this like yesterday save up your your payments cuz you know you're going to get those payments buy some land get a travel trailer and now you don't have to pay rent to someone so Yeah, ain't got nothing, can't lose nothing. I like that, Robert. All right. Yeah, property taxes in Arkansas is a lot less. My property taxes for my little bit of land is $45 a year. That's nothing. People stay on ley lines or get off of them. Well, I think you're you're gonna. <laughs> there are ley lines. We covered that a lot of the work on early on in the channel. We were looking at ley lines, like the 180th ley line. And you definitely want to look at the energy of the place, and which equates to like a ley line. I got a really good vibe when I was in the place where I'm at. But I've been in other places where the vibe is really bad. You see people around you dropping out, getting sick a lot. You see um, you see a lot of anger and fighting between people and dis dysfunction. 
that's because it's in a certain energy to the place. And I don't know how exactly how this works, but I believe that the ground holds something. Uh, this is biblical because when after Abel was killed in the Bible, uh, God said they, that Abel's blood was crying out from the ground. He could actually feel it and hear it. There are other examples of that too in the Bible. I can't think of them off the top of my head. But imagine the Native American experience and all the bloodshed that happened in history. So I'm sure there are certain places in that that kind of bloodshed is it's it's infectious and it like resonates after the person's gone. There's life in the blood, God says. So when that is spilt, it does something to the place that you're in. So definitely, you know, make sure that that you read into all that. Read in the history of the place. Look at the crime statistics. The all these things are important before uh purchasing some land. Look at the crime in the area. I'm fortunate. I'm in an area where there's almost zero crime. Very small community. Everyone says, God bless you, ma'am and sir. When do we have that in America anymore? So, now if you're there causing problems and being a troublemaker, you'll get blocked out of everything very quickly. But I don't live my life like that. I'm a, I guess you call it a law-abiding citizen, but moral law in terms of how I treat people. I don't try to get go over on people, you know, get over on people. I treat them fairly. And I, and that resonates with the people there. So what other questions do we have here? Someone says there's an EQ in Argentina. Yeah, they get a lot of them down there. Bless you guys too. God bless you. Thanks for that. Someone got hacked. Yeah, I'm in the heartland. Well, not yet. I'm in California now, but... Um, All right, William says, $180,000 house. Whoa. Let's read William's comment. William says, $180,000 house outside the city is about $800 a year for property tax. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that sounds about right. I think he's in Arkansas. Yeah, so there you go. That's That's still, like, that would be a little bit high for me. Because I don't make much money. But, um, you know, just remember, like, the more you have, the more you, you're going to spend. The more toys you have, the more you're going to have to pay to fix those toys. I, had a, I have a buddy. You know, he's I've known him for 20-something years. He, he likes BMWs. And um, he's, the cars, the, the, the cost of the car... But within a year to two years of having that car, he spends more in repairs and tires and all that than the car's worth. And uh, that's because BMWs are very expensive to fix and maintain. You know, so it's interesting, you know, that's just a little example of how that works. All right, what else do we have here? I looked into earth bag homes, yes or no? No, I haven't heard of earth bag homes. You know, they're very, they're popularizing these off-grid homes now. It's very popular on television. I don't watch a lot of programming. I watch films, yes, um, and I watch the news to see what the headlines are and stuff. But I don't watch a lot of the typical programming. But now it's become very popular. And what has that done? It's driven up the price of building an off-grid home. It's crazy. Like some of the accessories and things that you would put in an off-grid home have doubled or tripled in price. Because it's become popular on TV and everyone's doing it. 
what you see on TV, that's like the bougie way of doing it. You know, that's like the high-end off-grid homes. I mean, we were talking tens of thousands of dollars to build these homes or hundreds of thousands of dollars these people are investing in this. And to me, it's just silly because when it all hits the fan or if it all hits the fan, the who are going to be the first targets. They're going to come raid those homes, take all their solar panels and, you know, go, oh, what can we find in here? Look at this $300,000 off-grid home. I think it's just silly. I go discreet. I like to go discreet. Very low-key. But comfortable. Not too big. So. What else? Too late to talk about property and ownership. Well, no, it's not. I think that's... I, I, I cringe when I hear channels say that. Because basically that's exactly what they want you to say. Because it'll be really easy for them to go root out the people that do own property. All right. What you want to do is have a very low cost property. Like I tell you, properties in Arkansas are $3,000 an acre. An acre is a lot of land. Some In some instances that's cheaper, like $2,000 an acre. But if you're going to have like water on your property, it might be closer to $3,000 an acre. Your, your tax base is 50 bucks a year. So basically from here to the time you die, it's going to be a few thousand dollars for taxes in over the entire life of the property. Why, why not have a piece of land like that? And I've been there. I've been to Arkansas and I went into dozens of stores and I talked to the people that live there. And they said, if they're going to come for our land, we will defend it. And every single person there has a protection device. There's no way they're going to be able to come in there and take every single person's land. It's just not going to happen. And if you went to visit there, you would know that. Yeah, if you're in California and you've got a property that's costing you, you know, five or six thousand dollars a year in taxes. And you're in the middle of a town or a city. <clears throat> yeah, they might take your land. Because that's California. They'll come up with some ordinance or some law and they'll threaten your land. But not out in the sticks of Arkansas. They just won't. There's too many people who have had that land in their family for generations. All the way back to the civil times of the WAR. And they're just not going to... They can't do it. But when you watch some of these channels, they tell you, Oh, it's coming. They're going to come and take all the land. That doesn't work like that. They, they might take areas... But that's why you got to choose where you're going to live. But they're not going to get away with that in um, what are the what are the states? Even in the southern states. I mean, good luck. You might try it, but it's not going to work. You're not going to take those people's land. People, some of those people have been on that land for hundreds of years, and their family. You're not going to just go in and go. Okay, no more land. Agenda twenty one. Agenda twenty thirty. Yeah, it, it'll happen eventually, but not in our generation. So what are you going to do between now and then? You're just going to continue to be a slave to a landlord and pay rent, exorbitant amounts of rent that you could, in three months of paying rent, you could have your own acre of land, entire acre, instead of being in a tiny apartment? Are you just going to wait and be at the mercy of whatever city you live in? No, of course not. Do what you can now. And guess what? If all of us did that, we would make an impact. We would make it that much harder for them to take everyone's land because they're going to have a long list of people to go through to start taking their land. And let's say they did take the land. Let's say you bought the land now. And then let's say you bought an acre. Let's do a scenario here. $3,000. Let's say you saved up $3,000. You went on landwatch.com and you bought an acre of land in Arkansas that you're paying uh, twenty-five, twenty dollars a year in taxes for. <clears throat> so, what's the problem? Well, there is no problem because if you even if you had that land for seven or eight years before they took it, uh, you still lived rent free for seven or eight years, right? And if they took it, what did you lose? Three thousand dollars. I know people that blow three thousand dollars at in Vegas on a trip. I know people that go on dumb vacations and stay in hotels for two and three hundred dollars a night. 
and it'll blow that in one vacation. So what did you really lose? So don't fall for that. Don't fall for that thinking because what that thinking does is it talks people out of it in their mind of being free. Okay. Now let me give you another scenario. Uh, yeah, the Messiah will return very soon, Holly. That doesn't make me wrong. The, he, God wants us to live. There's many precedents for that. Uh, Noah, um, the Israelites, the Exodus. What if they would have just said, you know what? Sorry, we're not leaving Egypt. We're just going to chill here with the Pharaoh. Sorry, Moses. Uh, God will save us. It's fine. Moses like, no, get up off your butt. Let's go. We got to get out of here. No, no. Jesus is coming back and we're just going to chill or we'll just die and go to heaven because this is too hard. We don't want to do this. Well, guess what? God commanded them to do it. Get out. Why? Why did the Israelites have to survive? Because they were the bloodline of Christ to come, the pure bloodline. They had to, they had to get out. It was an exodus, and we're in a modern-day exodus now. Whether you want to believe it or not, you can sit there and make excuses and say, no, I'm just going to wait for Jesus. He's going to save me and protect me. But between now and then, the world's going to go to pot, and you're going to be faced with very, very hard decisions. And God's, and you're going to say, like, God, why is this happening? Why are they going to force my children to be VC? There's nothing I can do. I'm just going to have to, I'm just going to, have to do it, God, because I don't have a choice. Well, he's going to say, you had a choice. Casey tried to tell you a choice. And you ignored his, his, uh, his advice. You had the money to do it. You just chose not to. You made excuses. You listened to the, the naysayers who said, oh, don't even bother owning land. It's all going to get taken away anyway. You see how this works? So there's biblical precedent for exoduses. Lot and his wife had to get out. They had to leave their land, get out, and go into other places. So that's how that works, you guys. I hope this is making sense. This isn't a rebuke or anything like that. I'm just trying to speak from experience and also speak from a point of critical thinking so that you can not feel so helpless in your life now. A lot of people live in fear because they're at the mercy of a landlord who's raising their rent every month. A lot of people live in fear because their landlord could sell their property and they'll be out on the street and have to find somewhere to live. A lot of people live in fear because they're working at a job from nine to five and they need that job to pay their bills. Well, what would it be like if the third or half of your income that you give away to someone else to pay for a living, what if that didn't exist? Now you have half of your income to be less dependent on your employer, right? So that's all. What else? Yeah, Tomorrowland. All right, I appreciate everybody coming out. Thanks for the great discussion. Um, <laughs> all this is to detract us from learning the Torah, okay? If you have the money, do it. It's fool to waste money not doing this. I agree 100% as well. Now, someone sent me something. I guess there's all these xenon lights shining up from the cat, the crapit hole. Let's look it up. Lights shine capital. This is creepy. 56 lights. Oh, wait. Where'd it go? Oh, let's put in inauguration. See if it comes up. Wow, it didn't pop up. Hmm, interesting. Well, someone said that there was lights shining up and there were like 56 lights. Lights. 56. Representing the 50 states and the 6. Uh, we'll do another show on that if I can find it. Can't find it here live now, so. All right. Okay, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Thanks for coming out, everybody. Much love.